and today I'm going to show you the AP Pro AC from Peplink. This is an IP67, 3x3 MIMO, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz dual band Wi-Fi access point. And what's nice about this is the, the ruggedized enclosure. And so I'm going to be actually deploying this out in the field. And so what we're going to do is mount this to a, a mobile vehicle to provide Wi-Fi for a big coverage area for COVID testing, actually. So I'm flying out on Monday or Sunday and I'll install this on Monday. So I thought it'd be a really neat opportunity to go over the different installation uh, methods and, and powering it up and, and the options that it has. So you have the AP Pro AC. It's going to come with two Ethernet uh, watertight con connectors that you're going to want to use when you're installing this outside. It's going to come with a pull mount kit. It's going to come with a DC power input kit. It's going to come with screws to mount the, uh, the bracket to the AP. And then it's going to come with um, anchors if you want to mount this to a wall. The AP itself has two gigabit Ethernet ports, a antenna port on the bottom, and then two antenna ports on the top. That's your three by three MIMO. So if you're installed, if you're going to look at this connected, you'd have two a uh, two antennas here, one antenna down here, and then you have your two gigabit Ethernet. You also have your DC input if you want to power this via DC. So you'd unscrew this, you have your DC input, which is 12 to 36 volts, and then you would run a wire and solder that into this connection here to create your DC power. Now I think most people would operate this with PoE power. So what you're gonna have is you have your uh, a 10, 100, 1000 gigabit uh, LAN port, and then you have your PoE input port. So if we were to power this up, I would grab a PoE input from my UBR Go, unscrew this connector. Now, ideally outside, what you're gonna do, and I'll kind of simulate this in a minute, and then plug this in to this port that says PoE. That's how I'm gonna give it PoE for my LAN. There's an accessory kit that is the Peplink antennas. That's gonna give you three N-type male to connect to the N-type female that come with the, uh, the antenna. And so these are gonna screw on the top. And to set up your ethernet cable, you're gonna have your, um, your, your kit. So it's important to make sure you know how this kit goes on before you go installing this. You have this uh, black connector here. You're gonna to wanna to run your cable through, but first assemble it. So take the rubber end and put it on the bottom. Take the silver thing here and put it through so the threads are facing like that. And then this connector goes in on the bottom like this. Then you're going to take your ethernet cable through this assembly and then you would crimp your cable. And then it's going to hook in right here. So then you would slide the cable down and then hook it in. It's going to stick in the bottom there. Once that's assembled, you can then simply just screw it on like that and then tighten this, this, this around the cable. It's going to seal that cable, seal the connector, and this is going to dangle. So that's how you would assemble the cable and the ethernet cable is gonna come out there. So, but it's really important to make sure that you, you put this assembly together, then run your cable through. And then the, the, this little plastic piece here is gonna hook it. And then there's a sticker right here that you can stick down like that. And it's gonna hold the cable assembly and, and then it's gonna create a watertight seal that butts up against the metal here. So make sure you assemble this and have the cable going through there. To mount this, you have a couple different mounting options. It comes with a mounting plane that supports a pole mount a kit that will hook onto these two spots here. So you're going to have the pole mounts will come in like this right there, and then you can mount this to a pole, or you could get some metal straps and mount and slide them through here and then mount it to like a really big pole, right? So you can mount this to a really big mast or something like that. Or you can use the anchors that come with it and mount it right here to these four screws and mount it to a wall. So you have a big pole, a standard size pole, and then you have wall anchors if you need to mount it to wall anchors. To mount this to the AP, what you're gonna do is on the back side, you're gonna put these screws in that have the kind of the hex nut there. You're gonna mount those right in here And then you're going to mount this to your to your surface, and then these will sl slide in and then tighten down. 
And so that's how you're gonna get that mounted of it. So it's, it's pretty easy to put together and mount. And you have a whole bunch of different options for mounting, which makes it really nice as well. I'm gonna go ahead and give it my power and let it boot up. And you'll know that it's getting power because you can see the red light right there on this on the, the LED, this watertight LED uh, indicator. So that's gonna how we know how it's power. When it turns green, we know it's gonna be booted up. So I'm gonna go over to in control now and I'm gonna add this device into in control. So I'm gonna go to my in control platform. I'm gonna go to settings, add device. I'm gonna put in my serial number, hit next. I can give it a tag if I want to. I can give it a name if I want to. Hit confirm. Go back to my dashboard and you'll see the AP shows up right here. And I'm using my, my Uber Go to power the AP just so I can show you guys this, uh, this video. So what we're gonna wait for is it just to turn, turn green and come online. So you can see that it's turned green just while we're waiting for it to show up on in control, which it already has, but I'll go ahead and do this. We could just screw these antennas on like that. So you just take off the rubber caps that it comes with push that down in there. And, and I would use like a little wrench or something and just tighten it one nice good tight. Um, and once you get it on so that you don't have to worry about it leaking or creating it, you know, get that, that nice good seal. There we go. So we got our bottom one on there and our two top ones. So that's what it's going to look like. I'm going to go back over to in control because now it showed up in in control and you can see my AP here. Now there's a couple ways to program this AP um, in in control. The easiest way is simply to go to the, my Wi-Fi settings and in control, go to group wide SSID settings, and I can create an SSID. So I can say enable Wi-Fi management, hit save changes, add a new SSID, and I'm just gonna say AP Pro AC. Once you give it an SSID, I can then choose what types of devices that it's gonna go to based on tag. So when I inputted this tag, it has a mobile tag assigned to it. So I can say this SSID is enabled on some devices, all devices, or all devices except. So if I say this SSID is enabled on some devices, I can click on here. My tag that I assigned to this AP is going to show up right there. And then I can choose my security policy. Um, so I can do WPA3, WPA2, or WPA3, WPA2 only, WPA2 enterprise, WPA or WPA2 personal or WPA and WPA2 enterprise. So for this sake, I'm gonna do WPA2, WPA3. I'm gonna give it a nice little secure password. And then, then I can choose either layer two isolation. If this is gonna be a guest network and you wanna make sure that devices can't talk to each other. If we're gonna have a whole bunch of these devices, I can do enable our fast transition features. Um, we can also block LAN access. Once again, if you're trying to secure this for like a guest or a group of students or something like that, that might connect in, you can just block LAN access, which means they're going to connect to this and then only go out to the internet. We can also customize what subnets they're allowed to access and block them from traversing over um, PEP VPN. You can also give a group based uh, speed limit to the S to the entire SSID and then additionally do a per client speed limit on the SSID. And then you can also do a network prioritization QoS so that you can tag this SSID over your network. You can enable VLAN tagging and tag it to any VLANs available in in control. You can restrict based on an allowed MAC address list, which I'd recommend doing our new group managed MAC addresses instead. We do have multicast settings capability, radio selection capability, the maximum number of clients connected if you want to, and then you can enable your captive portal right here. So I'm gonna hit save changes. I've got my AP Pro AC assigned to my mobile health clinic one tag. And I can go back to my dashboard and see that this tag is applied to this AP. So now if I click on the AP itself, you can see that the SSID AP Pro AC is being pushed to this device already. I'm also running the latest firmware. If I need to update the firmware, I can go to settings, firmware management, and then choose the latest firmware. Let's take a look at AP. If I go to settings, remote web admin, I can see that I'm getting an IP address right here um, from the uh, Uber Go. And then I can see what firmware and the status of this network. I can then come into the network options and I can actually change my management VLAN ID. So if I want this to connect to like a VLAN 100 as my management VLAN, I can program that 100 right there. I can also enable spanning tree protocol. I can also schedule reboots and configure the mode of this device, whether I want it to be in router mode or bridge mode. Bridge mode is gonna obviously extend your LAN and pass your VLANs. If I put it in router mode, 
the ethernet ports are gonna convert into WAN and LAN ports. Um, and then I can do NAT or IP forwarding. So I can actually turn this into a router with IP forwarding and then route these VLANs over to my next network. So I'm gonna keep it in bridge mode, but uh, there is some cool uh, routing features that you can add here. And then if I go to my LAN options, right now I'm in bridge mode. So my LAN and my WAN are, are basically sharing. So we need to change it to router mode if we wanna do that. And then uh, if I go to my ethernet ports, I have my ethernet ports and I have the ability to trunk my VLANs if I want to. So like VLAN ID. So I can program that into the system right there, which is really nice if you wanna force a particular VLAN out of an ethernet port. And then you can do PEP VPN if you're not connected to a PEP link network, which is also kind of cool. If I go to my AP tab, you can see I've got uh, my wireless SSID. This is being configured by in control. If I turned off in control, I'd be able to configure that same SSID right here. But what I wanna show you are two features built into the PEPLink router, which is kind of neat. The first one is the wireless meshing capability. So you can mesh PEPLink APs together with a PEPLink router. Now, if you program the wireless meshing and the PEPLink router, it'll actually automatically program your APs. But if you wanna manually set that up, you can actually come in here, click add profile, give it a mesh ID, enable and a pre-shared key, and then choose either 2.4 and five gigahertz. If all of your APs in your router have the same mesh ID, they'll all mesh together and create that network for you. And then we also support WDS. If you wanna be able to just create a, a nice little wireless WDS network, you can do the same thing here by just adding the MAC address of the remote AP that you wanna to connect to and then do the old school manual WDS. So anyways, um, it's a relatively simple system, nice power. I really like the IP67 capabilities of it, but overall, I just wanted to give you an overview of how to set it up, how to connect it, and um, the different mounting options for this IP67 AP Pro AC. So thank you very much and thank you for watching another, another uh, training video from West Network.